रोड टू सक्सेस इज ब्रॉट टू यू बाय एपीटी बैंक एपीटी बैंक यू आर लिसनिंग केयरिंग पार्टनर You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Our guest is Charles Moshene of Cloud Lights, who believes he's an innovator. Karibu sana. Asante sana. You say you're an innovator. Uh, why? <laughs> because I innovate. I come up with things to solve uh, challenges in the society. Charles, one of the innovations that you have created is a Cloud Light. Please tell us about that. The Cloud Light uh, is, is a motorcycle safety vest. For increasing the visibility of the motorcyclist on the roads. So the vest has bright indicator lights at the back that are controlled wirelessly from the motorcycle's indication system. Why do you call it a clad light? What does that mean? Clad light, uh, clad is slang for clothes and then oh. light for the lights wow. that we put on clothes. And what inspired the idea of clad light? One day I was watching the uh, evening news and I saw there's uh, an increase in the number of motorcycle accidents. And from one of my projects that I was doing at home, just putting lights on clothes, I thought I could just uh, turn that from my individual use to uh, increasing the visibility of the motorcyclist. And that's how now the cloud light was born. Charles, how does this work? So um, the lights uh, on the jacket are controlled uh, wirelessly from the uh, motorcycle's indication system. On the motorcycle, there's a sensor that we install. So this takes about five minutes to install by a local mechanic and it costs you about 50 shillings to do so. So when the rider indicates uh, on his bike, for example, to make a right turn, then it shows on the jacket. And for example, if he does a left turn and if he presses his brakes on the bike, so whether on the handlebar or on the foot brakes, then it shows. So that's the functionality. Of the jacket. So there's nothing new the rider learns, it's just how he's used to riding his motorcycle. Charles, this is clearly an amazing innovation that you've, ta you've taken it further uh, because before that they would just wear this yeah, uh, with the reflectors but you have taken it further with this, the, the cloud light uh, innovation. Yes. Tell us, is this an original idea? Yes, it is an original idea. I, I started it as a home project and turned it into uh, a commercial product that would uh, help the society. But the other people already doing this, uh, for example, in the United States, uh, they try to put lights on a motorcycle jacket just to increase the visibility of the cyclist. Okay, so it's, it's something that you had seen before? And you, and you decided this would work for our country? So no, I actually found out about these guys when I had After. already built. Yes, so when, when, when you get training for business, you're required to learn who exactly is, is in your space. Yes. And so through my research, that's when I found such people. So the, uh, one, one of the two uh, was just having a crowdfunding campaign, trying to raise funds for him to make this jacket. So he had just a jacket at home. So the other one is an already existing company for um, uh, motorcycle clothes. So they, they now put lights on the jacket there. Mm -hmm. And so these are just, they are not known. Uh, nobody knows there's such an innovation existing. And so this we consider it the first in Africa. What does it take to create one of these? In terms of cost? In terms of cost, yeah. So cost, it takes about um, uh, uh, 3,000 to 4,000 to make one of these. Kenyan shillings. And where do you manufacture these? We are manufacturing them uh, outside the country in, in the Netherlands and uh, that's because we found an amazing company, engineering company there, that uh, uh, helped us to actually come up with this circuit. It's waterproof even if it's raining, if, uh, even in the harsh weather condition you can still use this jacket. Who is your specific target? I know you talked about the motorcyclist. Who else are you targeting for this? We've already targeted, for example, the uh, Buddha Buddha industry, which is uh, by far the largest in terms of numbers. Uh, but we also in talks with um, super bikers. So these people are very expensive bikes and uh, 
they'd like to have such safety on their motorcycles. So we've also uh, pivoted to uh, skaters and uh, cyclists on the roads who still require this visibility when they are either skating or riding on the roads. And how do you market uh, Cloudlight? We basically mostly do uh, social media, so on, on Facebook, Twitter, and, and uh, Google+. Plus. We use all that to market it. But now uh, the rest is done uh, via uh, media. We have uh, coverages of these jackets done by media, and that's how people get to know it. Charles, besides the border border industry that you're targeting, who else are you targeting to buy um, Cloud Light? So we are targeting uh, courier companies that have a fleet of motorcycles and companies who deal with uh, fast consumer moving goods. We are also looking for insurance companies who offer uh, insurance packages to uh, motorcycle people. We are also uh, looking for motorcycle assembly plants and those people have established uh, such plants here in the country such that they bundle the jacket with the motorcycle they sell. Out. What was the process of putting it together? I mean, we can just we can just break it down for me. I started by just buying electronic components, so from uh, various companies, and soldering them by hand. So it took a long time, and then the components that I bought were not specific for this kind of task here. And uh, along the way, we learned that uh, some of these components, you know, we can't use them for industrial scale uh, production of these jackets. Okay, why? why uh, because of uh, intellectual property rights of the components that you have there. So you have to redesign again the circuit and this is now what we have, which is a proprietary uh, circuit design. And it's taken you a, I mean, a long time to get it's to taken this. It's a long time. Why did it take this long? First of all, um, we'd say, uh, like I said, when you are hand soldering these uh, electronics, it, it takes quite a lot of time. So for me, just to make uh, 12 of the jackets could take about one and a half months. And these 12 are just for prototyping, for people to use them. Because the aim was to have the, um, the jacket usable at any time. So right now, these, um, two weeks ago, I visited one of the motorcyclists using it, and then he trained. So when he came, I was so happy since he was using it, and this time, it's working. It must not be easy uh, to come up with uh, an innovation like this. I mean, of course, there must be a lot of money that you have put in in, in this. And we'd like to talk about that when we come back okay. from our break. All right. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Don't go away. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Our guest is Charles Moshene of Cloud Lights, an innovator, truly, truly an innovator. Charles, for any innovation, there's time and money spent. How much time and money have you spent to be where you are today? So uh, Cloud Light has taken us uh, one year, seven months up to now to just uh, prototype on the circuit and come up with the final product that is on the market. So along the way, we've had to raise money from uh, friends, families, and uh, the company is uh, co-founded uh, by me and my brother, who had now to leave the company and uh, support it financially by working outside. So over the course of, the t of time, we've had to do uh, what you call crowdfunding. So I put up a crowdfunding platform called 1%. Uh, where we raised some money, which helped us to develop the circuit so far. So, uh, without getting to the specifics of the um, amount, it's well over, it's in the millions, I'll say. Millions to, yeah. to, to come up with. <laughs> to just have it now to the end, end, end user. Did you want to give up at any one time? I mean, this is a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of time. In the life of an entrepreneur, there are times when you wake up and you just feel you don't want to work on it. I mean, it's, it's, you're, you're giving up. But it's then taking too much, it's taking time, too much, much time, money. you're waiting for it to mature, for it to start giving back, you know, the, the investment that you've made, but it's taking quite some time. So now, other times, you wake up and you feel, this is my thing. Yeah, I want to do this. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's not giving back now, so let us have impact, and then the money thing, will think about it later. And, and what has been the response, like, from the... Buddha Buddha industry? They've been, you know, for them, they love flashy things. Sometime we were doing a pilot test and uh, one of the uh, motorcyclists said that he had increased uh, um, number of customers using him. 
So they usually come at home at 10 p.m. So now, at that time when you're having the jacket and it's lit, I mean, everybody wants to ride with you because they feel safer when they are seen on the road. Charles, for clarification, how many gadgets do I need uh, for this jacket? Do I need one for my customer and one for me or just... So you just need one gadget and uh, it can work with any number of uh, jackets. So the sensor is only installed once on the motorcycle, that's one time installation. And now you can have as many jackets as you want. So for example, if you want just three for one to leave it at home and use two and then pick it tomorrow, then I mean, you can have just as many number of jackets controlled by one sensor as possible. Charles, you mentioned that um, once you install the sensors. gadget that you're talking about, the sensors, yeah. um, it works for a specific bike. Yes. Am I able then to share this with my friends who has maybe forgotten theirs <laughs> and would require, and I'm not using the, the extra one. Okay, yes, you can. So the uh, sensors are standard, with the jackets are standard. So there is um, technicality to come up with that uh, the transmission uh, from the bike to the jacket is encrypted, so it doesn't interfere with other bikes. Now, if you want to lend your jacket to somebody else with a motorcycle, you can, but then they have to undergo a process of pairing the jacket with their motorcycle. So that means that uh, since there is no interference from your jacket, then it means the jacket was specific for you. So the code that it has is specific to you. For my bike. It's for your bike. Yeah. So then if it's supposed to be used with another bike, they have to rewrite the code. So it's not something that you pair, so it's a process we've come up with. It's just uh, pressing the brakes twice and using some indicator lights. Oh, it's not such a big thing. <laughs> it's not a big thing. So it's just something you do, the combination of those that pairs now your jacket with the new bike. And then now if they return to you, you have to do the same for it to work with your bike. Charles, earlier on you mentioned that uh, one of your biggest challenges is lack of electronic parts. What other challenges have you encountered in the creation of clad light. The first one was, um, I think, the earliest one was Capital. But then now we, we found a partner, the Nyla. So the Nyla believed in the idea in the early stages and actually offered us um, incubation in, in their space. And uh, from there, we also received funding on it. So it helped us to actually make the first prototypes in the market. So over the time now, we have um, have other people now just put money into the company. And uh, other challenges that have been there is uh, getting the relevant authorities, for example, to endorse the product. So we want to push this to the county governments, to the motorcycle assembly plants, to insurance companies. Just what lessons have you learned that you would want to share with, especially young people, when it comes to innovation? Okay, one is uh, do research. Okay, research is just so key when you're starting up a company. So you need to understand your customers, you need to understand your the solution that you're trying to provide to them. You need to speak to them before you even provide the solution to see if they can use it. So other lessons I've learned is to be uh, persistent. You need to be persistent in what you're doing. Other times, like I said, you wake up and you're feeling you don't want to work on it. But if you have that focus, laser-like focus on what you're doing, you'll succeed at the end. Where do you see this in the next year or so? We see this as a, a product used in other countries. It's not just a Kenyan product. We are exporting this innovation to other countries. For example, to uh, Uganda. They have numerous motorcycles. We have other countries like Nigeria, South Africa, India, Philippines, who have motorcycles. And this product is used on any motorcycle. So it's not restricted to Kenya. Now in the next one year, we hope to see it exported and being used in the neighboring countries in the East African region. Charles, how do you protect your idea? Because, you know, somebody watching may think this is an excellent idea and I'd like to do it myself. How do you protect this idea? So we filed a patent with the Kenya Industrial Property Institute on the uh, design of these uh, electronics uh, parts. And the patent is out. So that means that we have all the right to be the only ones making this here. So no copycats, we'll sue them. Okay, Charles, your innovation clearly reminds me of a quote by Jamie Nota that says that innovation is change that creates value. And that is what you are doing. Yeah. Creating value not only for Kenya, but you say the rest of Africa. And I know this will go very, very far. And we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on our show. Thank you.